All right, welcome back. We had a pretty nice playoff round, even though it was only one round. We made it to game seven. Started off pretty nicely. We were down three nothing. I just worded that really wrong. Started off poorly. We were down three nothing, and then we started the rookie sixteen year old goalie we trade for our big deadline acquisition, the fourth pick of the draft. Gave up all the stud nineteen twenty year olds for him. Uh, so he started game four. Just wanted to have. Him obviously we probably weren't gonna win the series up down three nothing, so I figured it'd be nice to get him some playoff experience so in the future he had a little more confidence. And he actually pulled out a win, and then we went back to Duquette and he pulled out a win. And so we actually ended up taking it to game seven. And I was actually considering going with the rookie, but I thought that'd be a little slap in the face to the good eighteen year old Duquette. So I figured because Duquette was probably gonna start a few more games next year than the sixteen year old will next year when they're nineteen and seventeen. Because then the seven year will have like two or three years after that to be the everyday man, almost. So I started the uh, older fellow, and we lost two to one. It was a good choice. He only had two goals and like thirty shots, but we couldn't generate much offense in Game Seven. So that was it for the playoff series, and we simulate to the draft. And I'll just give you a quick rundown again, one more time of the team. If you look at my depth charts here, this is for this year and this is for next year, and. That lines are in order. So next year we'll have the studs on the first line there. We'll have Miranda as the captain, the overager. He scored, I think, 77 points this year. Lee Sack will be our nice foreign center. He's a beast. Dodson's a nice six foot two twenty uh, two weighted guy. He's gonna be really good. And then next year Beaver should be able to jump up to the second line. I potentially might teach him center and keep him on the third or fourth line and teach him center the whole season so he knows for the future because he'll probably be able to play 18, 19, and 20 year old seasons with all those young guys. So I think it might be nice to have uh, him at center, but we'll see. I've already been teaching Wildmer center, so that is the main goal, because he was only 16 this year. He'll be 17 with Daly next year. They had pretty solid rookie seasons. I was really happy with Daly's development, if you remember him. He was a really tiny guy, like 5'9", 160. So it was really nice. He grew quite a bit. Similar size when he came in, and similar growth pattern to Del Monte, actually. So I liked uh, him and where I drafted him in the third round because he had three star potential and he was a pretty good skater. Then he had some good ratings in the center categories, like face off and positioning. So he's a good defensive center. Not actually the greatest setup, man. If you look, he's more of a shooter. His two highest categories are shooting actually and getting open. And his two lowest are uh, offensive read and passing. So he's more of a guy that's going to be a little bit of a scorer. So he would, would do pretty good in the wing. I taught him a little bit of both wings. He started at 12 and 12 experience in the left and right wing. So I try to teach him a little bit of both wings this year and next year. I think he's probably definitely going to be a winger in the future, but we'll see how this draft goes. If we don't pick up a lot of centers, then we'll probably keep him down the middle and have him and Wildmer. So we ended up kind of switching those two, but Wildmer is the much better player. I wanted to have him in the center for the future. Wildmer is a winger that I drafted in the first round last year and He's an absolute monster. It's a lot like McLeod, but even better, actually, that winger I have, who's going to be 19 years old. And he's the guy that I really want to teach center to have as the centerpiece of this really good team. So I think he'll be the play with all these guys in the draft here for four full years because he'll be able to probably eh, – I don't know if he'll play his overage season. He's pretty highly rated, but unless they're a five-star, they don't generally get drafted. Um, five-star league potential. So – the plan this year is to start off the year with, because as you can see, we the rule is you can only start six, four 16-year-olds on your roster, and so you can't just like have like 20 16-year-olds. So even though we're going to draft all these guys in the second and third rounds, we have four seconds and four third round picks, we're going to play all these 19-year-olds and have just have a couple 16-year-olds play, and then the year after is going to be when all those guys start. So I timed it up that way on purpose, so all these 19-year-olds will graduate, and then we'll pull in the whole 17-year-old class for this third year. So, the plan is to start the year with Miranda, that first line that's all 19, and then I think what we're probably going to do is make a blockbuster trade, and probably, Paquette's so good, he's got such crazy ratings. If you look at him, he's almost as good as Giancarlo was, just not quite the defensive player, and so he's going to be a huge trade piece as a 19-year-old, and he'd be one of the best defensemen in the league. He put up a monster season with 55 points, 55 games, 18 goals. And led the team in plus minus, and as you can see in his ratings, he's the perfect quarterback because his passing, a puck handling, and offensive read are 17, 15, 15, all the things you want on your point man on the power play. His offensive read being the most important category, in my opinion, that's his highest. And he's a really good skater, and he's got really good stamina and really solid uh, mental ratings. So he's got pretty much almost the perfect prospect, in my opinion. If I was going to draft a defenseman 
I'd want him to turn out exactly that way. Maybe a little higher defensive read, but he's a guy that I can't believe I was dumb enough to keep him junior for two years and only call him up at 18. I just was so low on defense, and his defense was all or all like 7 and 8 rated at the time. He was always a good offensive player, but uh, he's just exploded. So he's a guy that can bring back a huge return at the deadline. So if I have him as 19-year-old, the two OA centers, I potentially could trade my best players again, Hutton, sorry, um, Paquette, and then Miranda maybe. And then Dotson will bring back a huge return because Dotson is also a 19-year-old that uh, started 60 games three years in a row, 55 points last season. He's going to be set up for like a 78 season this year, depending on how things go. He's an elite offensive player with really good skating and solid passable defense, pretty consistent in all the categories. So he's a guy I think we could package with Paquette and potentially bring back a really high rookie. Uh, my goal is, since I only have the one first round pick at 16, I think the plan is to trade probably those elite 19 year olds and see if I can land the centerpiece is probably going to be the best way I've ever seen. Somehow he slipped to four in the draft. If I could get my hands on a trade to bring back this guy, I think that would be ideal. I think he's probably too good. I don't know if they'll give up him just because he's so, he's like a generational player. Probably the best center I've ever seen in this draft in over 10 years of this game specifically. 16 passing. I must have just changed. He's already, he would be the first line center of my team. Like that's how insane he is as a 16 year old. So yeah, he's a freak. But yeah, I think the it would be nice to bring back. Um, I'd like to make a trade for this guy later in the year. You can only the trade window for sixteen year olds first round picks because you can only trade for the sixteen year old first round picks. You can't trade for for sixteen year olds until they've finished the first year unless they're a first round pick, and you can only trade for them in January from that first to tenth window. So he's a guy I think I would want to bring back. He was picked right before I pick. Really good defensive. Uh, right defenseman, the right shot from Ontario there, and he's got really high defensive rating. So I'd really like to be able to bring him in, make him kind of the future uh, shutdown defender on the right side, and then maybe draft another offensive right defenseman, something like that. So I think that will be the plan is trade Paquette for a guy like that and see if uh, we can bring back some more elite talent, just absolutely overload this, uh, the 2013 Borns or whatever year this is. Yeah, 2013. So I was... Uh, so I stopped right at the draft. I did all these picks before me. The goalie went first, and then somehow that Unger guy slipped to fourth. And then a bunch of left defensemen went. As you can see, a bunch of goalies also went. And this is pretty weak for centers after that first guy. This guy was actually picked in the teens. Uh, I probably wouldn't pick him that high, but their scout thinks differently. And then this uh, center went right before me also. He's a pretty good, really good defense player. Not the strongest skater offense player, but he's got good size. And he'll probably turn into a pretty elite defensive center so he'll be a nice six foot like 200 center in a couple of years but uh i get probably another guy i wouldn't have picked that high and this really good winger went just above me another guy that's a really good a solid skater really good defensive player and works on offense a little bit but he's got a good size and he'll probably develop into a pretty solid player and so anyways at my pick my scouts as the best player in the draft is currently is the only one star left and then the next guy, McConnell's really close. So he's probably really close to a one-star based on his ratings. If you look at the ratings, it says he's 11 offense, 9 defense. And this guy's 10 and 10. So I would imagine this guy's just about to get a star, but my scout. But And he's also a five-star. So those two guys are really close. And I'll show you all the guys, but I think it'll come down to one of those two. Or the goalie. So if you look quickly at McDougal, I love this guy's game. He's a little guy, 5'6", 160. But he'll probably grow quite a bit because if they're short, but they're also skinny, that game usually evens that out. So he'll probably be like 5'10", like 175 or 185 when he's older. But he'll be a really good hitter. He's probably one of the most aggressive checkers I've ever seen from a first-round pick. 13 checking, 13 hitting, and 17 aggression. And 10 strength for a guy that small is incredible. So this guy is a firecracker. He's also got amazing balanced offensive read reading, so... He's got a 12 getting open, which is very elite for a rookie. And so he's a guy that would probably be a really, really good all-around player. Probably be one of the best players in the league just because he's so well-rounded in everything. He's just got incredible skill set. One of the best, probably, all-rounds. I Like, pretty much 10 in everything, skating, defense, and offense, 10+. plus. So that's one of the probably higher-rated current players I've ever seen. And so it would be really cool to have a small guy like that. But he's got, uh, he might be small, but he's a really physical player. So it'd be cool to see him. But I think, at first I kind of glanced over this guy because of the three-star potential. But it does say the league has him at five-star potential. It's probably somewhere in between that. 
and he is so elite. My scout has him as like far and away the best current player in the draft as a one star. He's got 12 face off, which is amazing. So I'll probably be 13, 14, 15 when he's older, which is really elite. That means he'll win like 60% of face offs in this league. He's got really good skating. He's actually the best current skater in the draft. He's got 10, and then he's got 13 agility already. So he'd probably be like all green in the skating when he's older. Really good 11 stamina too, which is solid. And 7 strength isn't too bad for a guy that's one of the better skaters in the draft. That'll probably turn into 9 or 10. And his offense is by far the best in the draft. It's not even close. 14 offensive read would be as good as any one of my team right now. Same with the 14 getting open. And his puck handling is really high level. So his shots average... His passing's above average, 11, and his offensive read getting open. And pretty much generational, you would say, as a 14 rated, as a 16 year old. That pretty much means they're going to be like 17 when he's older. So those categories pretty much mean he's a borderline, like generational offensive read. Like there's a very, very rare, it's a rookie as 14 in that. That's pretty tough to pass up. So I think I'll go with him. He is an American. I'm always a little biased and kind of prefer the Canadians. I'm a Canadian team, but I think uh, when American talent like that is like a can't really pass up on him. An elite like Austin Matthews type. So that guy would be insane. He'd probably be probably be on the power play as a 16 year old because his shot is and the offensive reader so good. He's so good cycling the pucks. Probably be able to play right away in like a second line power play as a rookie, which is crazy. So he is pre he's not very far off what Brenneman was. I'd have to look it up on an old video, but that is pretty damn close to what Brenneman was as a rookie. A couple 14 and 12s. I think Brenneman was probably a bit better skater, but I don't even know. I think Brenneman might have only been a 10 or 11. But, uh, yeah, I think this guy, it just doesn't have quite have the potential Brenneman had. I'd imagine Brenneman, I don't remember for sure, but I think it was above a three-star. But it doesn't really matter because he's already so good. Potential doesn't really matter. Like, this guy's so good where he'd already be a guaranteed, like, three-line, three or first-line guy as a center. So that's a guy that's going to be probably be the pick over the small guy. That's a tough decision for me, though. I've got them rated pretty closely. I think Peterson being a center and being so much bigger has probably puts him over the edge compared to that small winger. But there's also a chance I could get that winger because – uh, probably not. He's a five star, but I do pick. Even though I have all the second round picks, they're almost all late. I pick fifteenth here in the first round. The second round starts right at twenty one there, and I don't pick till thirty. But then I pick at thirty, thirty five, thirty six, thirty eight. So all three of my extra second round picks are very late ones. So we'll probably only have a chance to get one of these two guys. Um, my hope is that Talbot's still there. I know we just trade for the fourth overall pick goalie, that elite sixteen year old, but Talbot. It's very hard to get goalies in this game. The team, the PC teams really value the goalies. Like, they take them so high. Like, every year there's a goalie in the top two picks, and they take, like, five goalies in the top ten, and they're all just – all the good ones are gone every single year. And if you pass up on one the first round, by the time you get to the second, third, fourth round, they're just, like, all, like, six-rated and five-rated. So you kind of want to get a solid goalie almost every year in the OHL. Plus, you use two most of the time. Rotate them, like, 60-40 I usually rotate them with 70, 30, 60, 40. If a lot of times there's three games in a week, so it's two and one, and then there's a lot of times there's two games. I'll just kind of give them one each. So at the end of the year, the backups. So if I had the really elite guy, and then I took this guy, I'd be really set at goalie for four years, which is very tempting. I just I can't pick him over one of those two guys. But at the same time, if I don't pick him, he's so highly rated. They, like if you look at this, he's a seventh rated current in the draft and there's no other goalie even close like the next like 30 40 guys i don't see a goalie anywhere there so if i pass up on him there's just a major drop off where if i pass up on a winger i'm sure there's a guy right around the next pick that would be almost as good so a lot of solid guys in those first couple rounds on the wing and defense so that gives me a little pause because goalie's just so important and so all i'd have to do is spend this one first round pick and I could spend three or four second-round picks on forwards. And uh, if I spend this one first-round pick on a goalie, like I said, I'd pretty much solidify my goalie situation. I have him and Reese, 17, 16 years old. And then Duquette will be gone after that year probably, unless I get him back. It's no way. But I think that would be a really, really good option would be to go with Talbot. Because, uh, oh, and I'll show you. I'll just, I've started to use these filters a little bit more. I should have always been doing that. But if you look at just goalies in this draft, He's a four-star, no one else over two-and-a-half stars. So the next guy, that's the drop-off, if you look. So if you see – oh, shit. So if you look at the ratings, so this Talbot, he's got all pretty solid, like, eight nines and then a couple sevens. 
and a six and pretty good mentals. And if you look at this guy, he drops right off, where his best ratings are eight. So best ratings are 11 and 10. So four categories are 10 or above and a nine and two eights. And then you get like nothing over an eight. So that's a significant drop off. And then no one else even close to that. So if you look at ability two, the next best guy would be current would without much potential would be this. So that's a guy you take in like the third or fourth round. He'd probably be all like tens by his like 18, 19 year old season. So pretty much it's like, my scout saying in this draft, if you don't get Talbot, you might as well just like not take a goalie and take a Euro in the import the following year, and then as a 17 year old the next year, and then just have because you probably most of the Euros you can get are like two and a half potential, so you probably get um, unless you get Talbot, it'd just be worth waiting, I think. So that's a guy that I really would like to get. I just don't. It's just too hard, I think, to pass up on those centers. They're just too good. That's Peterson guy. So I don't know. I'll have to think about it a little bit more. Actually, no, I'd like to do a few draft picks in this video, so I'll probably just uh, pray that Talbot's there with my next pick, even though I don't think he will be. Because, I, yeah, I also just, I think McDonald's another guy I could trade for, which would be cool if he goes in the first round. Because I'd, uh, I'd like to stick the rules if he fell the second round. On, you can't trade for second round pick rookies. So I'd have to wait till he's 17 to trade for him. But uh, I think if he goes in the next few picks, which there's a good chance he will, he's the highest potential in the draft then I could trade for him also. But uh, anyways, since we're here, I might as well look at the other five-star potential guys because my scout says there's five like pretty elite guys in this draft. So this guy, very good. He's a defenseman with 12 speed, and he's got – I just to give you kind of like a reference is, yeah, anything over nine is pretty elite, like from a rookie with high potential. That pretty much means they'll be in an elite category. Like a, sevens turn into like 10, 11s. Twelves turn into like 15, 16s, which are like very elite. It's like a 12 skater. That's like as good as it gets. That's the fastest skater in the draft. So that's a defenseman that's 5'10, has very good offense, and is one of the best skaters in the draft. So you can see why he's a five star. You got this winger who's a five star because he's such an elite uh, speed guy, 11 speed, and then he's got 11 in a couple of offensive categories. So that's a just a pure goal scorer. That guy would be a uh, well, pure offensive guy, I should say. He's pretty balanced. He can pass the puck really well, actually. But, uh, yeah, he's a pure offense guy that would probably be a really good first-line winger. Uh, so that's another guy. Makes sense why he's a five-star. This defenseman, I'm not as keen, but my scout says he's got really high potential. He's six foot one, 180, so it's a really good frame for a kid that age. And got a late birthday, so that's a kid that will probably just be a really big, strong, defensive oriented center uh, defenseman. He's not a great skater, not a great offense player, but six one, one eighty 180 with big time hitting and solid defensive ratings. That's going to be one of those, just a big, solid, sturdy defensive guy, never an elite offensive guy. And then there's another elite offensive small guy, almost exactly like the other guy. He's a Toronto kid and he's got really good, uh, really good skating, 10 speed and 12 stamina. So he'd be a guy that can play a lot of minutes when he's older and he's got really, really high level defense and he's got really solid offense too. So he's a very balanced guy. The other guy's probably, um, but yeah, Murphy and this guy would be rated very closely. I, I think this guy would be a little bit better offense player, and the other guy would be a little more balanced, but it's very close. So that's all the best players in the draft, potential-wise. And then you get only two four-and-a-half stars. That's pretty rare. Usually by this pick, there's only about one five-star, and then about three or four, two or four-and-a-half stars. So that's uh, actually a really good draft, the fact that there's five five-stars left. And then we got... This defensive uh, left defenseman, he's a really good defensive player. Got good acceleration, really good offensive read. Couple, A bunch of really low red categories, though. You don't like to see that. So it takes a lot of progressions to get that from like a 3 to an 8. So it's never good. I don't find those guys develop too well that have a Sony reds. And then uh, you get this guy that's 5'11", 180. Really good uh, offensive defenseman. All, pretty much just as good as those other guys, the right defensive guys that I showed. Just uh, Scout has them just a tier below potential wise and then uh, yeah as you can see there's no centers on this uh potential list so that's another reason where it's peterson would be really enticing because there's not really any centers after that that my scout thinks are pretty elite this guy's got insane passing puck handling no shot whatsoever but um as a center it could just be more of a setup man with really good skating really good defense really good face-offs and uh just a, really needs a lot of work on the offensive game but he's a guy that could uh he'd be a really good guy to stash as a second round pick We'll definitely probably consider him in the second round to stash him for a year or two in junior and then in junior A or whatever and then bring him over when he's 
ready offensively because I think his passing so good that kind of makes up for the other stuff being so low. So he'd be a defensive oriented uh, third, fourth liner for a bunch of years. And then I think when he's 18, 19, his offense finally catches up. He'd be really good. And his passing's just so good. I think he'd be a good playmaker for that third, third or fourth line. And uh, yeah, so that's the options. I don't think there's much point of wasting much more time. Cause I don't think there's any way I'm going to talk myself out of Peter. So I really don't. Uh, I hate to pass on that goalie, but it's just, yeah, there's no need to worry too much because we got that elite five-star from last year, so we could even just pass on a goalie this year and then draft a guy in the first round next year or something and have at least one year separation between the goalie's ages. But, uh, yeah, it's just it's really, like, always tough to pass on a guy when there's such a drop-off from them to the next best player in the draft at their position just because even though Peterson's really elite, it's just you could probably get another, like, really good four in the second round, but just can't get a good goalie after this, but... Yeah, I'm just uh, kind of overthinking it at this point. Peterson's the pick. Way too good to pass up. That's that's a guy that's going to be a potential 100-point guy when he's 18, 19 years old. Especially on this team, you need a centerpiece. A center that's going to be a centerpiece of your offense. So he's going to be that, that first-line center for that elite team we're going to have with all those second, third-round picks once they're developed. So he's going to be probably the key cog there. So I'm going to go with Peterson. And then we're going to sim to human pick. Uh, so unfortunately, that Friggin' the guy went. That one defenseman's left. But yeah, so our uh, winger went, unfortunately. Let's see what happened here. So we pick Peterson. Yeah, he went the very next pick to Ottawa. So that's a team we'll have to remember potentially to trade for him. And then, yeah, the, that goalie tablet went 20th at the last week of the first round. Owen Sound. Oh, I forgot to mention Owen Sound won the Memorial. Dominated. Just dominated. They won the Memorial Cup like 6 nothing in the championship game. And they won the OHL championship in four game sweep. So they were just way, probably one of the best teams um, with, produ- uh, sorry, with like, I guess results wise I've seen. And like their actual ratings were as high as some of those earlier teams. Like even my team that won Memorial back in 2020, but they were uh, league wise. I think they only lost like eight or nine games and they were just solid. And I traded them my two best forwards, that really good Swedish center. And then I traded them my awesome six foot five winger. They were both uh, huge parts of that success. And I trained them a defenseman, too. So that was pretty cool to see three of my guys win the Memorial. The, yeah, I was Sam Prano, especially. He was a four-year starter. So that was, uh, that was a cool trade. And they beat – Sarnia also made it really far. That other team I traded all those elite guys, too. But, uh, yeah, so that was my first pick. At the next pick here. So all of my top guys went. That center I was talking about went, too. The guy who I said would be a good guy to stash for a couple of years. So we lost a lot of uh, – a lot of our targets there. All those really good right defensemen look like they went too. So <laughs> all those elite five stars are gone. I guess the scouts had similar opinions. This guy definitely is a guy strong consideration for this pick because scout has him as the only uh, four and a half star player in the draft, five star potential from the OSA or whatever you call it. So this is nine speed, twelve acceleration, and a really good defense. So that's a guy that's like a pure defensive center. The one I talked about. Those offense range are just a little too low for my liking. But screening and getting open don't really matter for a defenseman. Or even shooting accuracy, especially if I make him a defensive center. Sorry, defensive defenseman. Uh, but yeah, I don't know if I'll go with him. Even though my scout does have his best potential in my draft. So We have two more defensemen we'll look at. This guy would probably be the guy I'd consider just based off his size. And elite shot. He's got a 13 shooting accuracy. And he's got really balanced 8 to 10 rated and all the other stuff, defense and speed and mentals are pretty, actually they're pretty bad. The very aggression, but the other stuff's pretty high. So yeah, he's a guy that I really like his frame. I think he'd be a really good, like six foot three, 230 pound monster. That would be kind of like Thomas Harley, maybe a little bit, but more of a right shot. Just the fact that Harley's got a really good shot. He's a really good skater and he's big. This guy's kind of got a lot of those attributes. So that would be a nice guy to consider there. I think uh, we'll take a look at this left defenseman too. That's another guy that has pretty low offensive ratings. But he does at least have good passing and a good shot, which are pretty important for defense. His skating is pretty bad. His six, though, I don't, I wouldn't want to go to that bad of a skater in the second round. I'd rather take the better skaters. So I don't think that's a guy we'd want. I didn't uh, check out this winger yet. So this guy is only a two-and-a-half star from the league, when my guy has him at four, so he's a guy we'd definitely probably get later. But uh, he is very good. So I, I wouldn't want to pass on him for too long. He's probably a guy I'll take with one of these four second rounders. He's got 
really good positioning, which is good. So he's a good defensive winger. And he's got solid skating, 9 and 9, speed and balance. And then he's got pretty balanced offensive ratings. So, yeah, he's probably a guy we'll pick. I just don't think we'll pick him with his first pick here. I'd hope he's be there with a one of those. We got pretty much three or four picks here. So we pick whoever we don't pick here. It's only four picks in between. So we pretty much get, what is it, four of the next nine picks of this draft or four of the next ten. So we can kind of pick a bunch of these guys from the top of the list. So I'd just going to kind of consider which guy you think would be gone first, which would most likely be the four-and-a-half-star potential, right? But we'll see. The best current rated guy would be the center. He's got, ooh, that's a nice reach. Yeah, so he's probably a guy we'll go with. <clears throat> very good puck handling. Very good skater. Probably the best skater left in the draft. Very good offensive player. So, yeah, he's way too good, I think, to pass up. If we don't pick him with this pick, we'll definitely get him with one of the next picks. He's only got three-star potential, though, so we'll take a peek at some of these other guys. A little higher potential. Oh, this guy's really nice, too. This guy is absolutely no chill. 16 aggression, 1 temperament. But he's got crazy hitting, crazy, crazy offensive game. That's as good as an offensive game you're going to get from a second round pick ever. Guy with 12 screening, 12 passing, and 11 offensive read. So yeah, he'd be an amazing setup, man, with his passing and offensive read being so high. I would probably... I'd, I was just going to say I'd probably like to move him to center because he's so good and so good defensively, but his six face-offs might hurt a little bit, but you never know, that could go up. But yeah, that's a guy that uh, definitely, I think, will go with one of these picks for sure, so Robert Gods. So yeah, I really like both of those guys, the top two current rated players. Um, let's see here, this winger doesn't have much potential, but he's very good currently. Very good offensive read. Looks a lot like Beaver actually did, the guy I took in the first round uh, two years ago. Not quite as good, but pretty close. And then uh, we got this. We're falling all the way down to the two and a half star potential guys now, but we are sorting by best currents, not by potential. This guy's got amazing mentals, amazing. So this is a guy that I like better than that four and a half star, even though he's like a two and a half star potential. So my scout thinks the other guy's going to go way, up, way more, but I really think this guy's a lot better. If you remember, the other guy had like two and three or three and four in these two categories. And so this guy's got 10 and 11s on almost everything. And, Elite defensive positioning, which is the most important thing with defensive read. And he's a really decent skater, 8 and 10, 9 tens, which will all be a couple points higher. So that's a guy I think would grow a little bit, 5'11", like 190. I really like his game too. So yeah, there's going to be a lot of really good players in this draft we get. We can probably get all these guys. And then let's look at this other 3.5 star potential guy. Yeah, they're all pretty similar. This just this guy's more offensive than defensive is a little bit weak, but not really because his positioning's still really high. It's just the defensive read. Six is pretty low though from a defender, but he's very good in almost everything else. If that guy had ten or nine or ten defensive read, I think I would go with him. That's probably why his potential is a little bit lower, but it's still really good. So that guy's really solid too. A six foot three, hundred and fifty five pound American center with an amazing defensive read and offensive game and skater. So that's a guy with really high potential. So he could be like 6'5", like 2'10", or something. Kind of reminds me of Wall, the 6'5", 170 guy we took in the first round a couple years ago. Traded him to Sarnia this year for a couple second round picks, which is where we're going to pick this guy. So that's another cool thing to look at is like think about the players you traded and uh, what you're going to get as a return. So pretty much Wall is going to turn. I got two seconds for Wall. I traded Wall for two seconds and a third. He was like the best center in the league. Oh, I forgot to show you guys that. That's uh, the thing I kind of wanted to go over. I think Wall actually almost led the league in points. Where's the points here? Yeah, so Wall was 105. He was on my team for three years. He was a setup man between Bear and Kozlowski. And uh, moved to the point on the power play when Brenneman came at center. And then this year I figured... He'd want a chance to go win a championship, which he almost did. I think they lost to one sound in the semis. He had a huge year with 105 points and 40 goals. So that was really cool to see. He uh, he was a guy that, yeah, I traded for two seconds and a third. So definitely uh, be nice to get a good return because he was such a good player. So that's uh, at least the bright side of these guys being so good. Is got to think I could get a guy like that and a guy like that. Yeah, as a return for Wall. So in three or four years, we're going to be thankful we made that trade. All right, so I'm probably going to end this episode here. I'll, uh, I have so many picks coming up. i got to think a little bit more about these. 
What I'm probably going to end up doing is picking 40 with this pick. I really don't want to... Or no, sorry, was it Gods? Yeah, I really don't want to miss Gods. I think he's going to be my first line winger with uh, that center I just took. I think they're going to make an offensive dynamo combination. This guy with 12 passing, 12 screening, and 11 read. And then being uh, on the wing to that 6-1 center we just drafted that has like 14 rated and offensive read and stuff. So I have two guys that are going to have like amazingly high offensive read playing together with chemistry for three or four years. That's just going to be wicked. So I think we'll probably go gods with this pick. It's pretty hard to pass up on this four and a half guy though. Because my scout says he'll get so much better. But yeah, it just doesn't seem that great. It's not all about potential because they usually don't even get close to it. I, uh, was this the other guy we really liked? Yeah. So I have a really tough decision to make. I think I might even um, delay a day and uh, think about these picks. So once we probably make all four picks pretty quickly because we got almost all of them in a row here. So just want to make sure we don't mess up that first pick. I don't regret not taking the four and a half star guy if he turns into a monster. My scout thinks he's a pretty elite. So yeah, anyways, that's it. Don't want to ramble on. See you later.